We may begin our second examination of basic Golden Dawn material as a prerequisite for examining the Enochian aspects thereof by looking at what Mathers called the Concourse of the Forces, depicting the relationship between the twelve signs of the zodiac and the four elemental forces representing four seasons of the main year as they are meant to be read from top to bottom and from left to right, such that for Aries at the top, we would read Earth from the left to fire to water then to air on the right, so that the season governed by fire on the left would be summer, and the season governed by water on the left would be autumn, the season governed by air on the left would be winter, and so forth, such that the season of spring would be split with Aries in the center. Next, we will be looking at the attribution of a trait to each sign of the zodiac, such that there will be three such traits per each of the four seasons. And here we see that because Aries is actually the second sign of the zodiac attributed to the season of spring, then the common attribute would actually be the first to occur for each season, followed by the movable attribute, and finally the fixed trait occurs for each season. And so we see this pattern proceeds throughout displaying the seasons of the zodiac as elements. However, to visualize this object in the shape that Mathers himself may have imagined it, we can graph this chart onto the shape of a torus, depicting the zodiac round as Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, and finally back to Aries, in such a way that to measure from top to bottom on Mather's initial chart, we would rotate the chart as graphed onto a torus in a counterclockwise motion following which we can also see the four elemental seasons such that fire is summer water is autumn air is winter and earth is spring However, in this model, we may see also that the elemental sign fourth in order is relevant as well, as it occurs on the opposite side from the elements given to rule the seasons of the zodiac. Although note that these elements cannot be read following the same counterclockwise progression, since measured on the same side, they are actually opposite or upside down from their ordinary position as symbols. And so what we find is that this model depicts for the top of the zodiac a counterclockwise rotation measured on the right side of the apparatus and for the opposite side of the apparatus it depicts a clockwise rotation as measured from the left side, thus following the so-called concourse of the forces from earth in spring to fire in summer to water in autumn and so forth. According to the signs of the zodiac round, here presented as a torus or hypersphere to depict the simultaneous 
clockwise and counterclockwise counter-rotation.